Good morning. Happy Friday. Happy Critical Thinking Day. Happy April Fool's Day. I'm so glad you're here. My name is Phyllis Newbill. I am the Associate Director of Educational Networks uh, within ICAT. Um, and so this morning, a few housekeeping things before we get started. We are filming this morning with the 360 camera here in the middle of the room. So hello to those of you who are watching online. So we are live and we are uh, recording. So please behave accordingly for being on the internet forever afterwards. Um, there is a sign-in sheet somewhere in the room. Make sure you sign in. Uh, there are donuts and coffee. Thank you, Tom. There's coffee, so that's great. Thanks, Tom makes Tom. a great coffee. I don't drink coffee, <laughs> so I don't know. It, it is April 1st, everybody. It is April 1st. Uh, so please enjoy donuts, but please sign in, because that is how we know how many, uh, it's how we can justify keep, keeping getting donuts. That was not good grammar. Apologies for that. Um, if you, uh, if PDN credit is useful to you as a faculty member or graduate student, um, if you would register um, for today's play date, I will give you credit. And if you're online watching and joining us, if you would send me a note either through the questions or through my email, if you, that is easier for you, to let me know you're here, I will give you your 100% um, credit for being here. Announcements this morning. Next week there is no play date because many people who set up play dates will not be here at, and instead we will be at Accelerate at the Smithsonian um, in the American Museum of Natural, excuse me, National Museum of American History. There it is. Uh, and we will be celebrating with the other uh, ACC schools, all the creativity, innovation, amazing things that are happening there. Also, ICAT Creativity and Innovation Day is happening on May 2nd. That will be in the Moss Art Center from about 10 to 2. Then we'll come over here, we'll have a fashion show, we'll have a panel discussion, and also give out some awards. So be sure you're going to be here for that. If you've got questions about that, please let me know. All right. This, I'm so excited about this morning's play date. Um, be prepared to roll your eyes and groan and laugh. Um, I'm sorry to all of you who are not part of the ICAT internal staff to know the level of punning and silliness that goes on all the time in our staff meetings and Slack channels. Um, but today, you all get to see, get a glimpse inside, a glimpse inside of ICAT. I'm totally playing it straight today, just anyway. <laughs> so um, I'm super pleased to have Tom Martin and Lisa McNair, who's joining us on Zoom from Alaska, where it's, what, three in the morning? What time is it there, Lisa? <laughs> uh, oh, I thought that was some overlay. <laughs> <laughs> what time is it, Lisa? Oh, sorry, it's still She's muted. muted. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. And, we lost and now her. she froze. Anyway, she's in Alaska, so yay, I'm glad she's here with us as well. All right, I'm going to turn it over because I don't want to yep. take any more time for, away from the jokes. So, Thanks, everybody, for being here this morning. Lisa, thank you for joining us from Alaska. Um, so I put this slide up earlier, and of course now things are not going to work. Um, so I put this slide up earlier for the folks who are here in, the, in person. If you're online, at the end of this talk, I'm going to be collecting jokes from you about your discipline. So a good joke is one about your discipline that most people would get. A better joke would be a joke about your discipline that somebody who's worked with somebody in your discipline would get. And the best joke of all in terms of what we're looking for would be jokes that somebody who's in your discipline would get and nobody else would. Okay? Keep it strictly G, G or PG. We'll, we'll be sharing them with the crowd. Um, and then, uh, did I leave anything else? So if you're in person, I've got some three by five cards here. If you're online, you can put it in the chat, same as with questions, and Phyllis will share them with us. Now let's see if this works. Okay. So, I'm going to give you the origin story of this talk. So once upon a time, I was in a, Ed's going to love this, an industrial design conference. And somebody, an industrial designer got up to give a talk, and somewhere in the middle of his talk, he had a, mechanical a slide about mechanical engineering. Um, and it was funny to mechanical engineers, and you could hear people laughing across the crowd. And then a little bit later, he had some sort of kerning joke. Um, Sorry, and if you don't know what kerning is, kerning is the spacing between letters. And so he said, you know, and then some other set of people started laughing. And he said, you know, my undergrad degree is in mechanical engineering, then I went back to school and got a graphic design 
degree, and now I'm doing industrial design. Industrial designers come from all these different places, and I can tell what somebody's training is based upon what they laugh at. Right? So you mechanical engineers laughed at this thing, nobody else got it. You graphic designers laughed at this kerning thing, nobody else got it. And I had an aha moment because Lisa and I at the time had a grant from the National Science Foundation to study disciplinary cultures, how students become, think, start to think of themselves as whatever profession they're going into, a scientist, an engineer, an artist, designer, whatever. And so that is the, Lisa, what year, I've been talking to you about this for years now. It's, this at least, oh, actually, Jason, you were at that conference with me, 2015. So seven years, this, this talk is seven years in the making. So, um, Lisa, do you want to talk about this slide? Or do you want me to? Oh, I really put her on the spot in Alaska. All right, it's a, I'm, I'm on delay and it's a little echoey. Yep. That's fine. I'm not totally awake. Do you want to talk about this slide? We didn't practice this, by the way, in case you can't tell. So, um, so I'm taking this slide, yeah. Tom? Yes. Okay. So we have been looking at doing a little bit of research on jokes. And um, this is a great text, by the way. There we go. Yeah. Um, Words Matter by Keating and Yarvin Pa. And uh, a lot of it is about establishing common ground. But they have a chapter where they explain that getting a joke depends on the audience knowing the expected narrative and then something happening, kind of like on the way to the theater, um, abruptly changing to the unexpected. So classic joke, I went to a fight last night and a hockey game broke out. So, you know, taken literally, this sentence evokes a really bizarre image if you're visualizing it. But as they explain, it works because the hearers have common ground. So we're expecting one thing and getting another. So we can go to the next slide. Um, so that shared background and cultural knowledge that we're relying on is invisible. It's tacit, but it's required in joke telling because of timing. So it would just take too long to explain all the stuff. You know, what is hockey? What do people do at hockey games? And language is part of the implicit expectation too. So in English, a fight can break out, a war can break out, but not a hockey game. And a wedding can't break out, many other things. So um, jokes that don't work are often missing that tacit cultural knowledge. So a little bit more, and we can, we can play with this later when we get the actual jokes. But again, Keating and Yarvinpot explain um, ways, parts of language, parts of jokes that are disrupted, um, parts of common ground. So, so there's, there's schemas, scripts, and frames. Schemas are general patterns of, of what people do and why they do it. And um, they're easily recognized and responded to. We'll have a couple of examples in, um, in one of Tom's jokes. Uh, just right up next, but basically a schema um, is, is it kind of establishes possible. Um, scripts are sort of like how-to guidelines, how to order in a restaurant, how to get through airport security, and frames are um, these clues in our environments that give us, um, that tell us what's happening in an interaction. So if two people are you know, shouting at each other in the street, what's happening? Are they, are they actors acting out a skit? Have they been drinking too much? Are they talking over traffic? Are they about to get in a big fight? Um, and we have a lot of cues in a frame that, that tell us what's going on. Um, all of these things can be disrupted um, in, in different ways of life, but, but definitely they're used in jokes. So Tom, you can take it from here. Okay, because I was about to make an Oscars joke there, but I won't. Um, so, um, like I said, Lisa and I had an NSF grant on disciplinary culture, okay, where we were looking at um, how students learn to be members of profession. And so, while they're, while they're here at the university as undergraduates, you know, they're learning these schemas and scripts and frames um, about how to be a member of whatever profession they're training to be in. And so, an example of this is, um, as Lisa found a, a good PhD comics, right? So how grad school is like kindergarten. 
And I'll give you a second to read through that. Though I don't think I ever cried for my mother in grad school. I did cry for my advisor a couple times. <laughs> so, um, so we had this NSF Disciplinary Cultures Project um, with uh, Marie Peretti and Omero Mersey uh, in engineering ed. And you know, if you've written an NSF proposal, it's a one-page summary and 15 pages of description. But what our proposal really boiled down to was this, this two-part research question. Um, basically, you know, do students come to us, particularly undergraduate engineering students, do they come to us like this? Or did we train them to be that way? Is it our fault as faculty that they started acting like it, the way they did? And it really, this is a class that came out of a class that I taught with Ed Dorsa, who's here in the audience, and Eloise Coupe. And we were always, like the engineering students always acted differently in certain ways. And we actually had data on why they acted that way. So we were trying to figure out, is it nature or nurture? Um, and so, I'm about to show you, this is the joke that Lisa was referring to earlier. Um, so this is a, what about, I'm about to show you is really set up by the schema of a professor um, writing a course description that was presented at a curriculum meeting, okay? And actually this curriculum meeting was on April 1st, many, many years ago. And so I'm the lowly assistant professor, we've just, finish the, most of the meeting canceling a bunch of classes, and I hand in a new course proposal, okay? And so it's the schema of handing in the, the new course proposal and the script of the learning outcomes uh, and grading and, the, and the, the frame of a syllabus. So there's lots here to digest. But I hand this to my senior colleagues, and one of the senior colleagues goes, we've just canceled four classes, and now we're proposing a new one? What the heck? And I'm like, oh, I'm never gonna get tenure here. And then he starts reading. And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is ECE 0401, April 1st, humor for e intro to humor for ECE students. So incoming ECE students typically lack the ba basic background necessary to understand an instructor's jokes during lectures. The purpose of this course is to enable students to get jokes that pertain to the profession and how to provide appropriate feedback uh, to humor during a lecture. Um, and I won't go through all the major measurable learning objectives. It, faculty in the audience, if you've written one of these, you will notice I did not use the word understand anywhere in these objectives. This fully adhered to everything that was expected uh, of a course proposal. The most important one of all is explain why it's important to laugh at an instructor's jokes even when they're not funny, okay? So, what's that? Uh, yes, it does. Uh, this is only the first page of this. The second page of this had a list of 10 songs about electrical and computer engineering topics, all to like kids' tunes that they would know. So instead of uh, I'm a little teapot, it was I'm a little trim pot. Um, anyway, I won't subject you to all of that. Okay, so with that, we're going to do today's activity. So if, uh, if you're in the audience and you've written down a joke for me, um, actually, Lisa, do you want to add anything before I start? Um, reading people's jokes? Okay. So what I would like to do is uh, collect your jokes if you have them, and I'm going to, and we have some online as well, um, and I will read them and we will discuss them. So. I want to tell my joke. So Ed wants to tell his joke. Can you take the, yes, that's, that's totally, okay, that's fine. Uh, now, now, Ed, I have to ask, you stuck with the G and PG. Okay. Well, it's, yeah, it's PG. P I'll hold the mic. PG okay. or everybody else PG? So, so this, this happened a while back. Uh, the industrial design team at Apple was working on the iPhone 7, and it was late at night, and they were really stuck on some features, and they didn't know what to do. So they decided they'd go into their boss's office, Johnny Ive, who's a notoriously good designer and grumpy. And they go into his office, and there he is asleep on the couch. And they go, I don't know what to do. So one of the guys walks over and grabs him by the shoulder and shakes him. And Johnny Ives turns over and he goes, jack off. And the guy goes, well, that'll work. Oh. If nobody gets it, it's. And I said PG. Jack I, off. I... <laughs> OK. That's PG. OK. <laughs> no, I don't want you to explain your joke. <laughs> no. Jack out of the yes. iPhone 7. 
<laughs> okay. Right, you got to say that part again. On the mic. That was the year they took the audio jack out of the iPhone. Oh. <laughs> okay. Now That's I'm taking the mic back. <laughs> yeah. and, and this is why I wanted to read them. <laughs> Do we have others? I'm not sure I want to collect that one. <laughs> I have two. Thank you, Jamie. So, this is in the category of uh, finance and accounting, and it says, the pass-fail question on the, on the CPA, Certified Public Accountant Licensing Exam, uh, how much is two plus two? Answer, how much do you want it to be? <laughs> do we have a badoom ching like? So, okay, thanks. Next week. Yeah, next week, okay. Uh, oh, this is a good one. Nobody put their name, I like this one. I think college athletes should get paid to play sports, except Tennessee. They're volunteers. Actually, we can tell when Lisa gets them, because like three seconds later, it shows up. <laughs> Sorry, I'm making fun of the Zoom delay now, Lisa. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's Ed's joke. I'm not telling that one again. Oh, why did the hungry JavaScript programmer multiply a string by an integer? Because she wanted some non bread. Oh, that's bad. You can, okay. My son got an F on his geography test today. I sent him to his room, but he ended up in the kitchen. <laughs> I tried so hard to uh, empathize with Tom that my, uh, <laughs> that my mirror neurons broke, and now I, I have 10 years of bad luck. <laughs> there are 10 types of people in the world, those who understand binary and those who don't. That wasn't you, Brandon, was it? Okay. What's that? <laughs> oh, we can fix that. that we don't even need a reason to fix that. Oh, actually, yes. I'm, I'm ignoring the online ones. I apologize. Do you want to read them? Oh, they, they, They're G. They're totally G. Okay. Yeah. Um, Do you want to make it bigger? No. It's been, I'm just sorry. I'm trying to figure out where it starts. These two. Okay. Um, so when you show the client your final design, they say, can't wait to see the final design. So three st statisticians are shooting at cans for fun. The first takes a shot and misses to the left by a meter. The second shoots and misses to the right by a meter. The third says, we got it. <laughs> That's awesome. Brandon's thinking of one. So um, the only thing we learn from history is that nobody learns from history. That's one of those sad truth jokes. <laughs> yes. Sorry, I actually got this one. Uh, my TCP IP network uh, contracted COVID-19. It should have worn its subnet mask. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, what do you call a group of network engineers? An outage. Uh, this is two jokes on the same thing. I would tell you a joke about UDP, but you probably wouldn't get it. Oh, that one's bad. Too. That, we need a groan meter in this room is what we really need. Um, um, I want to tell you a joke about TCP. I guarantee you'll get it, but it might take a few tries. Oh. That one connected, okay. There's, there's got to be a networking person in the room, given the stream that we've got here. Um, how do you keep two string players in tune? You kill one. Wow. Like you know, the musicians, the, the artists are br just brutal. So, anyway, um, 
uh, one of the, these are all great. Thank you for doing this. But I want to point out, like, the thing that I observed at that ID talk many years ago was actually true, because I could, the networking jokes went over pretty well with this crowd, I could tell. <laughs> um, and so that, you know, that expected bit, that having the common ground, and then the joke is funny when you hit the unexpected bit, right? And so anyway, that was, that was the point of today's talk. Lisa, do you want to add anything to that? You're still muted, which is the joke of 2020. And 2020. I'm muted. I, I didn't totally hear the last thing that you said. I, I just sort of talked through some of the jokes and how they had the, the part of common ground, sorry, the part of common ground and uh, how they, so there was the expected bit and then what makes them funny is the unexpected bit. No pun intended. <laughs> right, just, just the, the, um, the, the thing that inspired us uh, to think about common ground um, was um, searching for a way to communicate with each other. And the interesting thing about not getting a joke is also kind of not getting, getting what we're trying to um, get to in terms of goals and, and be on the same page when we're in interdisciplinary teams. And even though sometimes you don't get a joke because of these differences, sort of explaining jokes and getting to, and, and using jokes to get to that, that same um, kind of common ground is, is really fun. And I think that that's one of the things that brought the team together, you know, however many years ago that was, is making those jokes over and over and over and over again until somebody got it and that we're on the same page. Yeah. And in the classroom too, I actually I apologize. There are a few people in here who've had me for class. I do tell the same jokes over and over again, but they are an indicator of when somebody's getting the class. And so I actually do use that as a pedagogical technique to, to see like whether I'm keeping the students along or not. I think we're to question time, but I just wanted to leave with this um, quote from Ernest Hemingway, and I think Phyllis got the picture, but. <laughs> so. I'll, I'll let you all read that for a second. So now that we have our higher grade of manure, what questions do we have? Tim's got a question. Tim definitely has a question. Wait, wait, wait. I gotta get there with the mic so the folks online he can hear you. He should know better than this by now. <laughs> On my way. So hi, I'm Tim. Uh, more of a statement than a question and, ju and just a statement in solidarity of this, uh, this talk. I, I work in East Africa, as many of you know, I work with an ethnic group they're called the Maasai, they're pastoralists. When I go to, and I'm getting ready to go to the field for the first time in a couple of years, um, in the field, when you're with a group of people who are like really different than you are, if you can figure out how to make each other laugh, that's spectacular. And it takes a little bit of work. They, and they're watching you and they're learning about you and they might say something. And when it makes you laugh, you can see that it delights them. And, and that inverse is also true. Um, I think humor is just such a useful thing. So as like a, a geographer slash anthropologist, it greatly helps me do my work if I can go to the field and talk to people and make them laugh and laugh at what they share with me. That's it. No question. Okay. <laughs> you should inflect at the end so, so it looks like a question, sounds like a question. I have a question, actually. Um, do you find... Is, is there a way, I've seen jokes used as a way to identify the insiders in a group, mm -hmm. like especially like wearing a shirt that nobody else gets and then when, when somebody does get it, you're like, I got it. Uh, and that's kind of cool, but I wonder how, can jokes be used in an exclusive way in the same way oh, that totally. Tim's talking about how. Yeah, totally, and that was part of the reason everybody. why I put the G, P, G, I mean, there are a lot of ways you can use jokes to hurt people, but there, we have a lot of different forms of expression that can be either used to bring people together or, or push people apart, and jokes are no different than that. So, yeah, it's certainly a, a way to exclude people. Um, sort of a mild-mannered form of that, um, I guess. Both my kids are colorblind, and at one point I found a T-shirt that looked like it said, I heart the colorblind, but actually, to, to a colorblind person, but to a not colorblind person, it actually had a circle and a slash through it. So... <laughs> So anyway, that's just yeah. a perfect example of, mm -hmm. right? So. What other questions do we have? 
stunned them all totally into silence, just like my students. They're all horrified at the number of jokes. <laughs> Check online too. My friend Orion ordered a bunch of stuff from Amazon the other week and um, he got it all out of the box. He got out his new outfit and his pants and his shirt and his belt and went back to do the review. He's like, the belt is three stars. That's bad. It goes over a lot of people's heads, but Orion's belt has three stars. Okay. It's over your heads. Sorry. Real bad. That, that I've was been good. waiting for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, I'm on my way. Can't take you serious. Do you oh. <laughs> I'm cheating and using the internet. Did you hear about the mathematician who's afraid of negative numbers? He'll stop at nothing to avoid them. <sighs> <laughs> that, that's real bad. <laughs> that's real bad. We're going to keep going like this all day, even after yeah, the play yeah, date I'll, is over. I'll, so I, I'll be here all night. So. <laughs> Uh, oh, actually, I forgot the best part. Ah, I re actually, I really did. I was going to say ahead of time, there would be a prize for anybody who could count the number of times I used Comic Sans in the, in the presentation. But, but I forgot to tell you that ahead of time. But it was two. Anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking at Ed because that was, anyway. Excellent. Well, I think we're at time. So thank you all so much to, for being here this morning and, and engaging in the silliness and the humor and the fun, and also thinking rather academically about it, because that is what we do as, uh, as academicians. Um, I hope that the rest of your day is full of really great critical thinking and good laughs. Um, and remember, there is no play date next week. There is Accelerate instead. So go to DC if you want to see us all. And um, have a great week, and we'll see you in two weeks for our play date then.